blessings to you, blessings to you. God loves you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Uh, we are, uh, we have entered into a, a uh, transition into a new realm of warfare. We have transitioned into a new realm of warfare. Uh, see me well. Uh, uh, and so I want to talk about um, what transitioned last year around November. I started to feel such weight and heaviness on me. Um, such weight and heaviness. Uh, <clears throat> and and it wasn't a an, an usual heaviness or oppression. It felt depressed, but it just felt dark. It felt like dark depression. Um, and I just kept feeling it, feeling it. And then we went on, my friends and I, we went on a fast. And the second day of the fast, uh, I was laying down. I was, I, was, I was so oppressed. I was so burdened down. I was so burdened down, yeah. <clears throat> I said, I told God, I said, God, deliver me, help me, because I don't know what's going on. I don't get this. This don't usually happen to me. Uh, well, I, I mean, we all have spiritual warfare, but this was like a different level. I went to sleep, had a dream. <clears throat> uh, and I was walking and I, I came, I saw a beach. There was the sidewalk, there was the beach sand, and then there was the beach itself, the seashore and the ocean. Okay. Mm. Um, as I began to walk, there was a white snake with a blue diamond on its, on its head. <clears throat> The, the snake was following me, <clears throat> and it looked as if it could camouflage into the sand. Oh, um, I I took a staff or a spear and I stabbed it. I stabbed it in the head, and then I went forward into going to the beach. When I woke up, I felt lighter. <clears throat> I felt lighter, uh, but even after that, I kept feeling these oppressive feelings. Um. But I begin to speak the word and talk to people. And I'm going to speak and speak the word of God and speak the word of God. And I want to talk right now about familiar spirits um, in the book of Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. It says, when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek after God? Should they seek the dead on the behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no light in them. When after that, after I had that dream, honestly, God showed me <clears throat> an old place I used to work at. And it was blue. It was blue. The the logo was blue. And there was someone there that was into occultism or, or uh, was a psychic message, basically. And 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 uh, <clears throat> the, the word. Uh, we talk about wizards and so forth, and the Bible speaks of familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. I don't have the text on me right now, but a familiar spirit, according to Old Testament, uh, was it literally means a household servant, meaning a servant that serves the house and the head of that house. It's familiar spirits serve the demonic or in the demonic realm, and they serve witches and warlocks and mediums, uh, and they whisper and they do enchantments and incantations. To, to, to disperse those spirits to serve them to get information to follow you <clears throat> I was being oppressed by a familiar spirit and I killed it but how do we kill the principality this power the ruler of darkness of the world spiritual gifts in our places uh, go to uh, Ephesians 6 and 14 he says therefore stand therefore stand meaning keep your position do not flinch and some of us were flinching. We're flinching because the enemy is bluffing and he's blowing a bluff. Sometimes what an animal or a predator would do is they would do a bluff charge to see who's going to run. And some of us, Satan has been bluffing us and we've been running. Some of us, we've been running from prayer. We've been running from fasting. We've been running from consecration. He's been doing this bluff and he's been trying to intimidate the people of God. And if we let him bluff us, watch this, now we become his prayer. So again, when we let Satan bluff us, we now have, watch this, we, we now become his prey. Because when you start running from an animal, their predatory instincts kicks in. And so they begin now to chase. But if an animal stands its ground, to stand your ground law, you have a stand your ground law in God. 
Satan, if you're coming after me, I'm standing. I'm not running. Too many of us are running. And if we're going to de defeat the demonic, we got to stand. We can't we can't bow down to Baal. We can't bow down to our idols. We can't bow down to sin of any kind because you can't stand against the enemy when you're sleeping with him. You can't stand against Satan if you're sleeping with him and rocking with him and talking with him and being his best friend. It don't work like that. You got to be set apart, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and living a God in life if you're going to stand against the enemy at this hour. Some of us, we can't stand against God. I mean, stand against Satan because we're living in sin. We can't stand against the devil because we're living in perversion. We can't, you cannot stand against him. If you're obeying him, he just stands. He says, actually, in verse 10, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Watch this here. It's not God's job to put on the arm of God for you. You have to put it on. You have to equip yourself daily with the word of God, with prayer, meditation, fasting, consecration. But some of us can't stand because we don't pray. We don't fast. We don't consecrate. So when the enemy does come, we're falling and we're stumbling everywhere. So stand. Therefore. Having girded your ways with truth. You need truth. You can't stand against Satan when you're accepting lies and distorted truth. When you're okay with living a lie. When you're okay accepting every belief and thought that comes to your mind. You can't stand against Satan when there is absolute truth. And you got people that don't believe in absolute truth. No, God says, I am the truth. And I, if God defines what truth is, and if we're not living according to the truth of his word, the Bible says the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. And we're not living to the Holy Spirit and what he teaches. Then we're listening to another spirit. You can't be listening, giving your ear to Satan and then try to stand against him. Because watch this. If you believe a lie, it'll backfire on you. And some of us are trying to stand against Satan, but we have lies in our spirit and mind and it's backfiring. And we find ourselves being defeated constantly over and over because we, we want the truth mixed in and, and diluted with all this, these other philosophies and theologies and ideologies that the world tells us. What lie have you believed that's keeping you from walking in victory? What lie have you believed from Satan or the world or a tradition that keeps you from having victory over the principalities, the powers, the rulers, and darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness, high places? He says, Watch this, verse 13, therefore take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand it, withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. You can't stand without the armor. You cannot, we can't stand, and watch this, when you stand I mean, and you take that military stance, you're steadfast. Stand means to be steadfast. Be steadfast to get the enemy, meaning we have to be persevering. This is a life of perseverance. We're going to be attacked by the enemy. We are going to be attacked by the enemy, by principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high place. Okay, we're going to be attacked. But you have to stand, but you can't stand without truth. You can't stand without truth. To start asking the Holy Spirit to expose every lie you've ever believed. Because some of us are using Satan's weapons against them and it's not working. You can only use truth when you're dealing with the demonic. You can only use the word of God when you're dealing with the money. You can't watch this. Some of you are using your opinion. Your opinion doesn't defeat or kill demons. It is the truth that kills the devil. The Bible says, Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, 18, he fell like lightning. Who made him fail? God. God is truth and God is love. The love of God will overpower the power of Satan. The truth of God overpowers the power of Satan. And if you're, if you're living in error, if you're not living the truth, if you're not living the truth, then you can't have power over the enemy. He says, gird up your waist, meaning it's a belt. A belt holds everything intact. And some of us are spiritually sagging. We're spiritually sagging. And the truth is not on our waist. It's on our knees, meaning it's firm. The, the truth of God's word has to be set in us. We have to be so fixated and stubborn in the truth of God that we don't waver. Some of you, you, you can't stand against the enemy because you waver and teeter-totter too much. And when Satan sees um, instability, that is, that is uh, that the predators instinct come in and say, hey, that's a weakness I can use and exploit. That's a weakness I can use and exploit. 
you have to tighten the truth around your waist. Is the truth around you? Are you carrying the truth? Or are you carrying opinions of people? Some of us are carrying traditions that we were taught when we were in church and it's not working. You wanna know why? God says, I need you to get my truth. He says, watch this, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness, doing what's right. You can't stand against the enemy if you're living in an immoral life. You can't exert power over the demonic and the, and the spiritual enemies of God when you don't apply righteous living or righteous principles to your heart. The breastplate that they use covered the, the front and the back. It covers the, the vital organs. The, 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 the righteousness covers you and protects you from the enemy. When you live a right life, a life, this word righteous is dikaios, D-I-K-A-I-O-S, or get the word D-K, D-I-K-E, means right. It meant, one of the words it meant was someone that did right or did good as a citizen, but it also meant someone that would conform and submitted them, themselves to the authority or the law or standard of another person higher than themselves. When we don't submit to God, we can't stand against the enemy. Some people are rebuking the devil and the devil just laughs. You can't, you can't, the devil doesn't run from people that live an immoral life. Watch this. You can't, God says, I can't protect you when you shack it. I can't protect you when you go into the club, smoke a weed with them jokes. That ain't righteousness. I can't protect you when you got bitterness in your heart. I can't protect you when you got hate in your heart. And some of us are getting stabbed and beat up and bullied by the devil. And we can't really exert power because we don't have the breastplate of righteousness. And, uh, and watch the Satan is throwing arrows and it's piercing our heart. It's, we're having spiritual heart attacks. Our mind is being devoured. Our emotions are being devoured, we're being torn apart by demonic spirits or by demonic powers because as saints, we're not applying righteousness to our lives. We're not living righteously. We're living in sin, living any kind of way we want. And then we wonder why we have no victory over the demonic principalities. He says righteousness protects some of y'all think being worldly is going to do you right. No, living worldly is going to make you a target. It makes you an open target to demonic assault. In other words, you don't even have a covering. The breastplate covers your, your lungs, your heart, your breastplate, your back, your spine. Some of y'all walk around with no breastplate because you won't live right. God said, just live. If you live right and if you live a holy life, you uh, you have protection. You ain't got to be scared of the arrows. It's just having your, your feet with the gospel of preparation, the gospel of peace. <clears throat> These were particular Roman shoes or sandals, and they tied them very tight. And they, and they had little stickers or something at the bottom that helped them grip the earth. Peace. Walking in peace. How do I walk in peace? Philippians 4 and 6 says, be not anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication, uh, <clears throat> make your request made known to God. And he, God says, I will give you peace. God, I will guard your heart with peace, your heart and your mind with peace. Philippians 4 and 8 actually says, right, listen, <clears throat> listen, whatsoever is, think on these things, think with your mind, has to do with your mind. Think on these things, whatsoever is pure, good, praiseworthy, trustworthy, loving, kind, holy, he says, holy, and think on these things, and the God of peace will guard your heart and mind and soul. You have peace that passes all understanding. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, if you keep your mind stayed on me, I'll keep you in perfect peace. <clears throat> peace being on the shoe, meaning your, the path you're on will be peaceful. <clears throat> peace also is shalom, which for Hebrew means healthy. <clears throat> your, your lifestyle will be healthy or whole. You will have peace of mind. You can have peace of mind even in war. You can have peace of mind even when you're engaging in warfare because, because of your mind. Peace comes from how we think. If, you, if you're watching pornography, you're not going to have peace. He says, everything quote, I, anything I just quote, said to you, it comes from where you, you, your thinking comes. Some of us don't have peace because our mind is not on God. It's on the stock market. It's on politics. It's on Trump. It's on Biden. It's on the government. It's on people. Some of us, it's on women and men. Where your mind is, your, where your mind is going to determine you have peace or not. And some of us don't have peace because our mind is perverted. He said, whatsoever is pure as well. You, can, you can't have the peace of God and your mind is a garbage can. 
You can't watch the, You can't stand against the enemy with a dirty mind, because Satan will use that against you. You can't. You can't. You can't fight effectively when you're believing the lies. See, whatsoever is trustworthy or true. Some of us are believing lies that distort, have distorted thinking, and that's what some of us is hindering us from walking in the vision, this victorious life called Christianity, through which Jesus Christ died on the cross, so we can have victory. <clears throat> you need to write down your thoughts. What do you think? Some of us, what's hindering your ability to to walk in victory in the power of God is your your thinking, your, the way you think. Change your thinking, and you will have peace. And the Satan can't use what's going on in your mind. See, Satan knows what, how we think it. Because anything that's not God or holy, it belongs to him. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all that is of the flesh. And if we're walking in the flesh in our mind, which is our thinking, then we're giving Satan legal rights to, to have access to us. And you want to start destroying those legal rights or, the, or those act places he can gain access and availability to our life. And it's above all, take the shield of faith Get the shield of faith. <clears throat> quench every fiery daughter of the enemy. Quench every fiery daughter of the wickedness. <clears throat> Meaning, you want to do you harm? Uh, uh, the the the, uh, <clears throat> the shield was very big, and it was actually drenched in the water. And they had a buckler that tied it on. Them. Faith. You got to have faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God. You can't have faith if you don't have the word. And some of us have little to no word. We have no ammunition. You got to have ammunition in your spirit. You gotta be in the world day and night, eating, regurgitating. You can't be <clears throat> eating on everything. You can't eat from everybody's table. <clears throat> Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. That word word is rhema, meaning a spoken word. Faith comes when you hear the word of God. And some of us don't have faith because we're not hearing God. We're under people that are speaking their opinions. And some of us, we have faith in opinions and people's opinions, and we have faith in the news. But if, until you have faith in God and his word, you can't stand against the enemy. God says, have faith in my word, and my faith will help you stand firm against the enemy. <clears throat> this is the helmet of salvation. So you can be saved and not have the helmet on. What was the purpose of this helmet? The Roman helmet was, was built in a way where it also covered their neck. There were those certain enemies of the Roman soldier, <clears throat> of the Roman soldier, that actually tried to cut your neck off with an axe. If you didn't have that little covering in the back, they can cut the neck off. And so many of us are losing our mind and losing our heads. And our heads are getting ripped off by, by the enemy because we're not applying the word of God to our mind. When you get saved, it's not enough to be saved. You have to apply salvation even in your thinking. You can be saved in your spirit, but not saved in your mind. What you mean? <clears throat> It, salvation, you're saved through confession of sin and repentance and believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and that he raised the dead. But that don't mean your mind is saved or redeemed. When you start renewing your mind, you start re renewing your mind and it become, and it aligns with the Holy Spirit living in you. And some of us, were losing our minds because we haven't renewed our mind to the place where it is in sync and in synchronization with the Holy Spirit that lives in our spirit. And if you don't apply your salvation to your thinking and your experience with Jesus Christ to your thinking, if you don't apply forgiveness and the grace and the power and the word of God to your thinking, you'll lose your mind. Then he says, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. <clears throat> the word sword, you take the sword, S-W-O-R-D. Sword. It is a weapon and a defense. It's an offensive weapon. But you take that word sword, you take the S out, you got word. The word of the spirit. You have to be spirit led when we fight the enemy. Some of us will will fight the enemy in our flesh. <clears throat> we're fighting demonic spirits in our flesh, which is the word of God or rainbow or spoken of the word of God, which is speak. When it, when you speak, that's air. You have the ability to 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 change the atmosphere with your mouth. Every word that comes out of your mouth is air, is oxygen. You have the ability to speak holy righteousness into the atmosphere. Demons are nothing but air, disembodied spirit. Spirit is Greek word for pneuma, which is, means air or wind or breath. These are demonic breaths. They're demonic air. They're demonic wind. And we have the power and authority to the Holy Ghost to rebuke and bind.
through the spirit of God, a holy, the holy air, the holy breath of God, uh, to kill and destroy the tactics of the enemy. But he says, of the spirit, you can't speak. Watch this. Be careful of the words you say. He says, the, the sword or the word of the spirit. Some of us were speaking words into the atmosphere and it's, it is coming as a boomerang. And the enemies are taking some of us. We, we cut, we cussing, we lie. Be careful of your words. Put them, guard over your mouth. Guard your mouth. If the word of God ain't coming out your mouth, don't let it come out. Because Satan will use that word you sent out that was negative or evil or nasty, that lie, that gossip. Some of us, this is what some of y'all can't win. You can't stand because everything coming out your mouth with the word of God. Everything coming out your mouth ain't spiritual. If it ain't spiritual, godly, or holy, don't let it come out your mouth. Because you can't stand when your mouth is a garbage can. You can't stand when your mouth is a garbage can. You got to have the word of God in your mouth. And some of us got gossip in our mouth. We got love and hip hop in our mouth. We got porn in our mouth. We got lying in our mouth. And then you wonder why you can't stand against Satan and sin. You put never you eating everything else but the word of God. And then when the enemy does come, you try to rebuke him. He said, I see them cavities. Satan see them cavities. Because we're eating a bunch of garbage in the church and the body of Christ. And we can't exert power. And it says, semicolon. What does all this institute? It says, praying. Always with all the prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watched to the end with all perseverance. And supplication for all saints, and for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may speak. He, he he said three times. He's he's saying the spirit. Other words, he's saying make sure your words are spirit led. Make sure your prayers are spirit led. Make sure everything you do is inspired by the Holy Spirit and not your flesh, not tradition, not what people say, but the Holy Ghost inspired Word of God, prophecy, prayer. We should be praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I end with this. I was having some problems last year. I was I started backsliding into porn as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? The Holy Ghost showed me this dream, right? There was a supermarket, and a person had a demon in it. And the demon was moving real fast. The demon was fast. It was just choo, 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 choo. and I kept trying to get the demon and, and bind that demon and overpower that demon. And I'll be running and I'm running trying to get every time I get close to the demon, it just it just accelerate, it accelerate. It was too fast for me. But something happened in the dream. The Holy Spirit, I stopped trying. And the Holy Spirit empowered me. And I, and he, you ever saw uh, Fast and the Furious when they hit that uh, nitro button and it shoots off the shoot? That's literally what happened. The Holy Ghost, spiritual nitro, boom. And I grabbed that demon, y'all. That demon couldn't run. And I bind that demon like never before. This is why he says the spirit, you can't cast out demons in your flesh. You can't, we cannot overcome the demonic in our flesh. Too many of us are depending on us. We're depending on our theology, our doctorate degree, our tradition, what mama and them taught, our flesh, our own prestige. No, the only way we're going to do this y'all, is we have to say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate right now. To activate means to act. And the Holy Spirit acted in that dream and, and helped me overcome. And he's going to help us y'all. He gonna help us, but we gotta apply these principles. We have power, y'all. We have power. And the reason why some of us can't bind the enemy because what you flesh it. We're not living according to the spirit. When you live according to the spirit, the Holy Spirit will empower you at that moment and give you the speed, the agility, the ability, and the power to bind and rebuke and renounce the enemy in any part of our life. Y'all. But he said off this, be watchful, be mindful, keep your keep your eyes out, be aware. Don't be just looking, close your eyes, walk around, and got no sense. He says, and with all perseverance. Meaning, we got to go through, y'all. We got to persevere through this thing. We got to persevere, y'all. We have to persevere through this. Um, y'all, we good. We blessed. We are blessed people. Apply these principles. Be careful of your diet. Be careful what you eat. Because what you eat is going to determine how you live. Some of us are so spiritually sluggish and lazy because we're putting all this junk from the world in our spirit. You know, if you eat the wrong foods, if you ever ate something just made you sleepy, some of us, the enemy is making us sleepy and tired. Just said be watchful. That means the opposite. That means to be awake. Some of us are not spiritually awake and in tune with the Holy Spirit because we're putting worldly stuff in our spirit and it's making us sleepy. It's making us tired. Some of you, you're so drained and taxed spiritually because you're listening to all this garbage and rap and hip hop and all these other things but you're, it's, 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 it's stinking up and, top, and poisoning your, your soul. 
Put the right foods in your spirit. Jesus said, my word is spirit and truth. The word will feed your spirit. The word will feed your mind. The word will feed your soul and it will strengthen you and you'll have more energy to do the will and the things of God. Be careful of your diet. Stop, some of you, y'all, stop eating from the tables of sinners. Stop eating from the tables of unbelievers. Stop eating the, tape, the scraps and the pl- from the plates of sin and unrighteousness. Because when you eat that stuff, one, you're saying, I agree with this. I'm in agreement with sin and unrighteousness. And two, it's going to make you spiritually lazy and sluggish. Because some of y'all can't pray for an hour. Because you got all that junk in your spirit. And that junk, got, some of you got spiritual itis. Spiritual artists, you, you, you can't, get, you can't, that's why you can't come to prayer. That's why you can't read your Bible. That's why you can't study. Because you got, you're backed up with junk and junk food. But if you get the right food, which is spirit and truth through the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, it'll detoxify. And we got the fast. Fasting detoxifies your body. Some of you, you're not going to the next level until you fast and pray. Until you fast and pray. I remember uh, watching Dragon Ball Z and a revelation came to me about shutting in. And the Holy Spirit brought it to my mind, the hyperbolic time chamber. Do you know the hyperbolic time chamber literally means the chamber of spirit and time? Meaning what it meant, when a person wanted to get stronger, they could go into a hyperbolic time chamber and get stronger in a day than they would in a year. So they would get a year's worth of results in Dragon Ball Z uh, to fight the enemy. So perfect example, Vegeta became a Super Saiyan. Um, and he beat Android 17 or 16, right? Just give it an example. He went into the... He went to fight Android 18 or 19 and got beat up, got beat up, messed up. He went into the hyperbolic time chamber and come back, came back stronger, and he did that in a day. Hyperbolic time chamber mean, means spirit and time. When you get in the spirit, when you get in the spirit of God and you operate in the spirit, you'll get stronger. When you operate in the Holy Ghost, you speed up time and you're able to do in a day what other folk couldn't do in a year. It's a y'all. If we get in a realm of the spirit, we can ha- we can go in a shut in and in a dimension in the Holy Ghost that what we couldn't defeat before, we can defeat with less time and do less and be more effective, y'all. It's time to transform. It's time to go super saiyan. It's time to go super saiyan two on the devil. Now, some of us we can't transform because we won't train. They had to train in that hyperbolic time period. They had to fight. Some of us, we don't want to train. We don't want to learn. We don't want to listen to nobody. We don't want to submit to nobody's authority. We don't want to isolate. Hyperbolic time chamber was an isolating place. You had to close the door. You in there by yourself. Some of us, we don't want to be isolated and hide in the secret place of God and submit ourselves to fasting and praying. And this is why some of us can't beat Freezer. We can't beat Sale. We can't beat Android 16. And you're trying to go to the next level, wondering why nothing ain't working. You need to fast and pray and shut yourself in. You, everybody got to pray for you. Everybody got to put oil and slobber you down with oil. Well, maybe if you have some discipline and get in the spirit and consecrate your time to God, take your time and consecrate it to the Holy Ghost and get in the Holy Ghost, he will empower you and equip you and increase your ability to overthrow the enemy and sin in your life. But some of us, we can't overthrow it because we have no spiritual discipline. It's time to discipline ourselves. Father, in the name of Jesus. For if, if anybody listening and you're not saved, you need to be saved. You can't have power over the enemy when you're living in this camp and you're sleeping in this bed. You can't, can't have power over the demonic spirit and sin by sleeping in the enemy's camp and, 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 and living in the bed. Colossians 1 and 13 says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, whom he, he has purchased us and brought us out of darkness um, and redeemed us through redemption. Through the forgiveness of sin. It's all through forgiveness, y'all. So Luke 177 says, Jesus Christ came that we know salvation or experience salvation through the forgiveness of sin. So let's pray. If you if you're not saved, let's pray this prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins. I confess my sins to you. You are righteous and pure and good. I am a sinner. I'm deprived of, of all righteousness. There's no good in me. I submit to your righteousness. And I believe that Jesus died, was buried, and resurrected, resurrected with all power in heaven and on earth. And that you raised him from the dead. And I believe and confess him as Lord and Savior. And I confess and commit my life to him. In the name of I commit my spirit, soul, and body. And I commit my sins to him. And all my sins and the guilt of sin has been transferred to Jesus Christ. And I don't, I no longer carry the guilt of sin. I no longer carry the emotion of sin. I no longer carry the residue and generational uh, um, um, the poison of sin. All of my sin and emotions of sin 
and the effects of sin have been transferred to Christ. And I receive the righteousness of God by faith. I receive his goodness, his mercy, his power, his love. I receive all the attributes of Christ by faith in my spiritual account, in my soul, spirit, and mind and body. And I receive all the benefits of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's go into prayer, y'all. Let's fast. Let's seek the face of God. Amen. God loves you. God cares about you. Y'all, we got power. But there are some things. Watch this here. There are some. What? I, I'm sorry. There was a point when Frieza fights Goku on Namek. And Goku couldn't beat Frieza. Frieza killed Krillin and Piccolo. And that is the mo very moment that Goku went Super Saiyan. And he got mad. Some of you, here's your problem. You're not mad enough. You're not mad. You won't get angry. Some of you, are you willing for your family to die by the hands of Frieza? Are you willing for the, the people in your family to die before you transform? You got to transform. The Bible says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Some of us are at a normal level. Super. We're a regular saint. We're a regular Christian. Some of you, it's the transformation that gives you empowerment. When Goku transformed, he could fight and beat Frieza. But he couldn't beat him at his base level. Some of us are at a base level in Christianity. God is trying to take us to the next level. And you can't, some of you, you're not mad enough. You got to get mad. Get mad with the devil. And your hair going to change. Your, your, your vision going to change. Your aura going to change. Your thinking going to change. Your conversation going to change. Your environment's going to change when you transform. How do you transform? Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the word of God. Change your environment. Changing how you think. Get around people that are strong. Stop staying around weak people. Stop being around weak Christians. If they continue being weak, let them stay weak. You hang around some strong folks, and the, the strength in them will get, get on you. Some of y'all, you're around too many weak people, weak-minded people, or people that's like, like being mediocre. They ain't trying to go to the next level. You're around them, you're going to be just like, and get up a level, a place of spiritual discipline where you're studying, you're consecrated, you're fasting. You said some things come by fasting and prayer. That's discipline. Have spiritual disciplines, fasting, prayer, and giving. All right. I love y'all. Y'all, we are empowered, but we got to have these disciplines. We have to have these disciplines because we can overcome Satan or the demonic realm or the familiar spirits or so forth. One, if we don't know who we are and if we don't exercise it. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. This is the day the Lord has made. Y'all, we already won. Let me say this. We have already won. We have already won, y'all. We just have to live in the reality of our victory. Amen. And what is God trying to do is get us to live in the reality of it. Amen. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed now. Uh, and if you want to sow a seed into my ministry, go ahead. Just go to my website, AntoineDThurston.com. Uh, here's my website right here. Uh, and just sow a seed. And I do have a book. I was exposed to witchcraft. And that's why I had the experience of things. And I can help empower y'all and empower others. Through my book, um, 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 it's my, call, my book is called My Bondage and My Freedom, From the Mental Institution to the Pulpit. Um, and through that, I had to learn how to fight. And sometimes you got to go through certain things because God got to teach you how to fight the enemy and, and teach you your identity and how to fight the enemy. God loves you. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, y'all be blessed. Love y'all. And you be strengthened in the Lord. Amen. God bless.